My name is Samir, and I'm part of the product management team for Maple. My role here at MapleSoft is to talk to people. I talk to people about our technology tools and services and how to best use them. This webinar is called Stop Using Excel Before You Make an Expensive Error. And if you take one thing away from this presentation, it's this. Fundamentally, spreadsheets are great as a data store. They also have low barrier of entry for simple, low impact calculations. However, they're a significant source of risk for more complex engineering analyses. And risk is something that needs to be tamed, brought under control, and managed. There's a broader story here that's not just about Excel. Um, you have to use the right tool for the job. For some applications, that could be Excel. For others, it might be Maple, Matlab, something completely different. Now, let me start by asking a question and then answering it. What differentiates an engineered product from a crafted product? It doesn't matter what type of engineer you are, civil, mechanical, chemical, electrical, the answer is always the same. The difference between an engineered product and a crafted product is applied mathematics based upon the fundamental principles of physics. This enables us to make far more sophisticated products and squeeze the last bit of efficiency from a system. Accordingly, calculations deserve respect. It's my personal belief that you should treat calculations with at least a modicum of care and attention. After all, they are the very bedrock of engineering. Engineers pick a tool to solve a problem. If they're deriving equations or doing first principles modeling, they might use paper and a pen. Sometimes an engineer might use programming language for batch analyses or creating an interactive interface that sits on top of their analyses. If they're involved in number crunching, they might use a spreadsheet. And engineers do this far more often than deriving equations or programming by at least an order of magnitude. So here we have three different use cases and three different tools. That in of itself is a problem, but we'll come to that later. Now we're going to talk about spreadsheets in greater detail, Excel for calculations and analyses. So here's a fundamental rule of engineering that I think everyone will agree with. A core part of an engineer's role is to look for, identify, and actively minimize sources of risk. So what does that mean for the calculations that engineers do day to day? To answer that, you need to take a step back and look at the characteristics of engineering calculations. They're fundamentally derived from the principles of applied math and physics. You, or indeed somebody else, needs to check that results make sense. And those calculations have to be readable, documented, and traceable. And there's usually a flow of control. Calculations have to be evaluated in a certain order. Parameters have dimensions, whether it's length, time, enthalpy, density, viscosity, and so on. And you might need advanced mathematical routines, things that calculator doesn't easily give you. Given those characteristics, an engineer who wants to minimize risk needs to ask themselves a number of questions. If you're deriving equations, are your assumptions correct? Have you made an error when manipulating any equations by hand? When the calculations are being audited either by you or someone else, can they be followed easily? Are the equations easy to understand? Can you quickly spot and resolve errors early in the calculation process? 
if you're using units, are your calculations dimensionally correct? Are you adding, for example, add apples and oranges? If you need advanced math, you should ask if any code you've written or are using works under a wide variety of conditions. Has it been stress tested? Now, for a number of good reasons, many engineers pick Excel as their calculation tool. They, they may not even have that choice, it's just what they're given and they have no option to use anything else. Now, Excel has what I call a very charming face. Excel invites you to use it. People are familiar with Excel. You might have used Excel for a long time, perhaps as long as you've had a computer. It feels comfortable and familiar, so why would you want to learn anything new? That's a very human question. And there's also the perceived ease of use with Excel, and I use that qualifier perceived very carefully. You might think you know how to use Excel well, even though, frankly, remarkably few people actually do. Excel itself doesn't impose any structure or order on your calculations. Initially, that means it's easy just to get started because you can define your own structure and then if you want to, break your own rules. Of course, there's a long-term cost to that. Excel is also ubiquitous. It exists on virtually every computer at the workplace. You can almost guarantee that everyone has Excel installed. So deployment, appears to be free. And there's no additional cost to using Excel. While you might personally want to purchase better calculation software, using Excel means that you don't have to justify spending any money to your manager. However, and this is something I think we've or always all of us have gone through, um, Starting a spreadsheet calculation is easy enough. Um, you simply fire up a spreadsheet and start bashing away at some equations. And it's easy to put something down, plug in a few numbers, get a sense of the solution space. And as I said earlier, Excel doesn't impose a structure, so you can define your own structure and break your own rules. And that initial flexibility, the fact that you can put equations and numbers anywhere, is very alluring. However, a few hours later, or even maybe a few months or years down the line, you come back to debug or extend the spreadsheet, and what do you get? Well, I'm sure everyone recognizes the fact that Excel formulas are in line. They're re unreadable. They're also hidden behind a number. Spreadsheets, especially non-trivial spreadsheets, are really difficult to follow because you're jumping about from cell to row to column to cell and back again with no order. And that's what I call spaghetti logic. Variable names are usually cell references. There's no support for units. That means that you might need conversion factors cluttering up your formula with no explanation of where these magic numbers come from of what or what you're converting from and to. There's a limited number of plotting routines and of course the math is limited as well. So despite its allure and its initial perceived ease of use, you're left with something that you can't easily read, extend or deploy to a broader audience. And yet, engineers still use spreadsheets in ways that you were never meant to be, in ways that they were never meant to be used. And why is that? Because it's the easy thing to do. But, of course, as I'm sure we're all aware, the easy thing to do isn't necessarily the right thing to do. And this is all the source of risk that's compounded spreadsheet after spreadsheet, year after year. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means you have to pick and choose what you do with Excel very carefully. 
If you want to use Excel as a data store or to do something with pivot table, it's a great tool. It's the right tool. If you have some simple, low impact calculations, it's a great tool. And frankly, it's something I use all the time. If you want to reconcile your taxes at the end of the year, use Excel. However, if you're doing anything that's more involved, anything that's non-trivial, then it's not the right tool to use. There are numerous sources of risk in Excel that compound year after year, spreadsheet after spreadsheet, until invariably you make an expensive error, an error that costs you time and money. To end with, I'm going to touch on a slide that I showed you earlier. Here, we listed some of the things that engineers do and what tools they might use. Three different tools and three different use cases. And of course, I mentioned in of itself the fact that we have three different use cases and three different tools. That's a problem. Now, I work for MapleSoft and we sell a tool called Maple, as I'm sure you're all well aware. I hope I haven't been overly commercial so far, but this is where I do get to talk about Maple. So Maple itself combines the design metaphor of a sheet of paper together with a math engine. That means you can do algebra, create auditable, easy to follow design documents, write code, and create interactive applications in a continuous, single, fluid environment. Its very design means that there's a low risk of making errors when you're developing Maple calculations because the errors are simple to spot. They are very easy to spot. 